this is recording. Okay, this is the perineum. We have the labia. Uh, yes, thank you. This is better, right? Mm -hmm. We have the labia minor. Uh, uh, outer, the inner lips, which is at labia minor, and then the outer lips is here. We have the the, the fortune is at this very point, and you can actually see that uh, the anal uh, opening, the anus is at this point, it's a bit posterior. If you look at the flip it a bit, a posterior, you see that the anal opening is at this point. Uh, the perineal body is actually located here. Um, normally, what happens is that uh, when you get a perineal tear, uh, it uh, tears along the natural um, uh, body planes, and that's where the body actually has met, where the two sides of the body has met, and that's where it happens. And naturally, that tear can actually extend into the perineal body and up to the anus. And as it goes along its way to the anus, you're more likely going to injure the anal sphincter. We have the external anal sphincter, that's actually striated muscles, and the internal anal sphincter. So when you get a tear, that involves the uh, perineal muscles that moves along here. It's the one that actually constricts the vaginal cavity. If you get a, a, a tear of that, we call that a second degree perineal tear. Of course, a, a first degree perineal tear means that uh, the, the, the perineal muscles are spared. It's only the vaginal mucosa that is affected. So if you get something like that only, that's what we call the first degree perineal tear. A second degree perineal tear may be this big. Uh, that means that it has involved the, 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 the perineal muscles, the transverse perineal muscles. Uh, an extension of this can involve uh, the anal sphincter. If it has involved uh, the anal sphincter, we call that a third degree perineal tear. Uh, and then definitely, if the anal sphincters are all uh, Several, and then you reach the rectal mucosa, we call that a uh, fourth perineal uh, tear, fourth degree perineal tear. Uh, an episiotomy uh, can be done, uh, what we call uh, a median episiotomy, which is not practiced in our, in our part of the world here, and then you have the mediolateral episiotomy. The median episiotomy is done along the tissue plane. Uh, it's more likely going to extend to cause a third and a fourth degree perineal tear, naturally. Uh, a mediolateral episiotomy was meant to prevent uh, extension into a third and fourth degree perineal tear. So you start at the same point, at the, at, the, at the midline here, but you go at an angle of 45 degrees. Okay? Uh, that's how you make it. And naturally, you may actually go and then it, it could still cause a tear on the, on the uh, perineal muscles, yeah. but that can be uh, closed. Um, the median episiotomy is normally practiced in other parts of the world, like the US, and then the, the mediolateral is practiced in uh, other parts of the world. But uh, in, 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 if you realize that in meta analysis, shows that the median episiotomy is better compared to this. In, in, in fact, they say that the rates of uh, gaping, episiotomy gaping after median episiotomy is less rate of uh, sexual dysfunction is less with median episiotomy, rates of pain, postoperative episiotomy pain is less with median episiotomy. But the bigger risk is, of course, uh, is this, the cause of the third and fourth degree perineal tear. Thank you.